we are thing. live. We are finally live. Tech takes so long to get right, huh? Tech is well. I think usually these companies, it's like once they build the thing and everyone uses it, it's quite successful. Yeah. They they get they're lazy. Just like all right, well, I built the thing. That's it. Especially <laughs> if they're not yet a billion dollar company. When they're like startups. Oh, sometimes they abandon their work. Yeah, Actually, I've noticed that a couple of softwares that are, yeah, things that I use, it's like there's always a point where it just doesn't work. Or some annoying bugs that you know shouldn't take very yeah, long. Yeah, and it's, you notice the thing eventually just falling apart. And yeah. you're like, what the heck? And then, but then you notice there are so many new ones on the market. Like when you first had that one, you discovered that one, that was the only one. Right. And now there are like five. Better just ones. like, where are these? They have these been this whole time. My life could have been so much easier months ago. And so you jump on the new stuff, and then you just realize that those people just thought it would be cool to come up with an idea. They got a bunch of users when they built the thing. Right. They may have made money, and then they're just like, ah, we're done. Let's go do something else. Because these are, um, you know, these are not like Fortune 500 companies out here. A lot of them these not, ads. Yeah. Apps. Most of them are just like a couple of guys. Yeah. Just well, sometimes around. it's one person. Sometimes one it's developer. just one person. Sometimes it's just a college student. They're building it out because they thought they had a cool idea. Maybe they didn't get enough people to make to you know wow them, or they or they just got bored with it or whatever. They want to work on their next project, so they just abandon this. Yeah. They don't realize that when you create an app or a software that everyone's using, you have to keep maintaining it. It costs them something. Yeah. It does, we have to but pay then it, people, like, it just falls apart. And the people who started using that from, like, maybe their business or their schoolwork or whatever, now it's like they're, you just leave them, you abandon, it, when you abandon that project, you abandon them. And it's just, it's mean. Okay, well, let me say this. I think that if it's free, that you shouldn't complain. But if you paid for it, that's when I have a problem with well, the developers. That means that they're wasting their money or the business not is poorly run. Because if it's a service and they're charging appropriately for it, they should be able to have enough revenue to... to yeah, uh, to keep investing back in it. Reinvest into the business, yes. Make it make better. And make it better. Provide more value. I think that's why the big ones keep getting better. Imagine, imagine if Amazon stayed the same way it was. 10 years ago oh well then it wouldn't have survived <laughs> exactly. you know there would be another one that solved all the problems that everyone has with amazon and then and then that would be it yep you know someone else would take over and the person who gets it right and it may not be like really right in the beginning and it may not have even been the first one but mm -hmm. the person who just keeps doing better and getting it right or just doing it well keeping investing and reinventing itself eventually it's like you catch on and you get everybody now you also have to pay attention to user feedback right if yeah. you you know you have to be one of those guys that goes to the reviews to the comment section and read and farm for information farm for data from your yeah. users use it to tweak the, the product and then give the people what they want exactly. and they will keep coming back and they'll, they'll pay you whatever you deserve yeah so, so I mean, that's... <laughs> how do we get on that subject? But you know, that's that's um. Let's see. I I find it as even in our little you know the different business ventures that we've attempted, right? Mm -hmm. I I'm learning so much along the way, even though we those were to... even though those were mistakes or yeah. failures. I actually don't want to call them mistakes. Even though they felt like failures, they're not really failures. They're learning experiences. We like to learn from experience, clearly. But, you know, it just might be something that people like to do. It's an expensive way to do it. It's an expensive way to do it, but eventually you're going to get there and you're going to learn everything you need to. You keep going. I don't think that you can avoid failure if you're trying to succeed. You have to get out there and uh, put yourself at risk, or be willing to, uh, you know. I, I want. I'm bringing this up because of the products that we were just talking about. The different 
software as a service products oh. that we've tried over the years yeah. and how they woefully, some of them woefully perform. You remember that bookkeeping service that we tried to use? Oh my God, what was it called again? I don't um, even remember their name. Yeah, it, it was so that. terrible. I don't. I think I found them. That was when I believed every ad I saw on IG. Oh, I even gave it time, you know. Yeah. I paid attention, and when it marketed to me, I thought they were like they got their stuff together. Right. And we signed up, and it was this subscription service, and it was. I don't know. Anyway, so it was just, okay, the problems, right? <sighs> Those problems, it was so irritating because they kept, like, every other day they would be like, oh, we don't know what this is or we don't know what this is. So there, I would always have to be communicating with them, like, almost every single day. And if I skip an email, well, that's it. Also, they don't use QuickBooks. They have their own platform. Right. So in order for us to really understand what's going on, you have to learn how to use their, their stuff. Yeah. And then we can't move. If we, oh, and I think they do that on purpose so that we'll make, we'll let them do our taxes. Because if we want to go do someone else, like maybe we have a CPA that we want to do our taxes, uh -huh. that, you know, it's so difficult because everyone else in the world uses yes. QuickBooks, right? right. <laughs> so all the CPAs are like, just add me to your QuickBooks. And we're like, we don't know what, we, our, People do something different, and then we trying to get convert every like thing that they did to QuickBooks was a nightmare. And then a lot of the things re remember it was it was weird and screwy what they did. Some things didn't even make sense when we were actually looking at the different you know transactions. Yeah, right, well, let's pull and, that back yeah, because 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 <laughs> that's a tangent. Now the point is <laughs> the the products were terrible. Yeah. And I don't know what happened to them. They're gone, I think. I don't think they survived. They don't show up. Yeah, they don't when show you up. Google, you know, put that So we lost all that more. money. But the thing, the, the reason why we were talking, the reason why this is all even a topic here is because I, I still give them credit for trying. Okay. People, we have the things and the luxuries that we have because there are entrepreneurs that were willing to try. Everything that we're currently using was once an idea. And they're entrepreneurs that are willing to give it an attempt. Even if they fail at it, they tried it. We've also made those attempts. We have absolutely so many people we hired from Fiverr. Oh, you know what? I believe that service that we used actually did this. I guarantee you it was just one guy who decided he wanted to have a bookkeeping agency. <laughs> and so he did, must have did, you know, he created the website and did all that. He probably got it from Fiverr. Yeah, he got, you know, he, he just had someone build the whole thing for him. And then he probably has a TA managing um, a couple of different um, CPAs from Fiverr or bookkeepers on Fiverr. Mm -hmm. So I think it, I think the whole Teams thing, so I know you can make Teams on Upwork, and I think they, you can do it on Fiverr. I think that's a real no, thing, and people actually build. Running build. businesses off on top of yeah. that. Yeah. Like a team of Fiverr. That's actually your employees. When people say, I have a team of 400 employees, it could just be a bunch of freelancers. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Guys, do you understand what that even means? You can actually build a full agency, um, you know, for almost any. You can have a whole media company, and it's just five hundred employees. Multi-million dollar. Program. You don't even have to run it because you have a TA to run it yourself, <laughs> right? And then you have an HR manager from Fiverr, and then you just, they and then they hire everyone for, for you. you, right? They build a whole team. So up. I've seen this model before on YouTube. <laughs> Why don't? So we've been doing it the wrong way, and. We had to go through all of that to get to this point, right? When we started off to set up our company, this was 2019, set up our company, ventured into CBD, ventured into, and we were rent, we were also renting out the uh, RV, yeah, on outdoors, the you know, RV share. Um, what else were we doing? But this whole time we were using freelancers. Yeah. Right. But 
we didn't know how to hire the right people. Or even when we hired people, what was it that you always said? We hired cheap. <laughs> we, went very, yeah, we were very cheap about We them. always hire cheap. And then usually when they do the work, I'm always looking at it like, really? Well, I guess this is what you get for $10. And, you know, a $10 Crappy website job. or something like that. And then uh, I'm just like, wow, I really could have did something better. And I have done something better. I can, like... Over the years, I think this actually forced me to learn how to use WordPress and Shopify and all of that. I never would have uh, understood how to use any of these platforms if it weren't for me having to learn because I need to clean up what the freelancers did. Yeah. So that's, you know, I mean, actually, we've actually been developing skills all these years. Right. <laughs> like, I never, if it weren't for us attempting you know, um, building all these companies we have in the past, I don't, would not even know what WordPress is. I would not know that. I did not even understand the difference between blogging and essay writing and just like... And what it means, what SEO means, what it means for your page to like rank, that. what it means for, you know, like even hiring people managing people. I did not even under really understand how information was on the internet. I really just that what it actually was a mystery to me. I didn't know that it was just all a bunch of blogs. Mostly are just articles. And it's it's all just written by regular people. There are people did, back there writing those content. Like just regular people at home like building websites and writing articles. So when And you, that is how the information has I mean, the internet has so much information. And then Google just indexes them. So yeah. that we can find them easy. This that's the internet. So, Welcome to the internet, everybody. So you it, can be one of those content creators. It's yeah. So it's like bloggers are actually the ones shaping the internet. They're the one whether they're good that's why it's actually really important to be good mm -hmm. at blogging or just blogging for with the best intentions. Sweet. Because you're providing information to the world. Right. Everyone using the internet. Everyone needs the internet, right? right? Um, so, you know, without you providing this information, that's what you, the whole point is to have the best information on your website for the reader. You know, you want to be the one that has the best information. You don't want to do a sloppy job. You want to be the right. one that answers the questions. That's if you have empathy for your audience. If you don't and you're just like... Whatever. Just let me Here's throw something stupid together, and I don't really care. I'll even copy and paste some stuff that other people wrote, and then let AI scramble it about and turn it into something else, and then that's your post. Um, yeah. You really take it to heart, and you are the one providing information on the internet for the people. Thousands of people hopefully will see your article and go, Oh my God, I feel so relieved. They're like, oh, you answered my question. Let me go buy this stuff. <laughs> I was thinking of buying whatever, because that's pretty much all we do is just consume and buy stuff. And that's usually what we're looking for information about. Social proof. What stuff we can buy. Um, but, you know, but here, it's but, good for other things. But my pushback is we also bear a responsibility not to, uh, not to be too hard on ourselves. Because there's a learning curve. Yeah. Your content doesn't have to be perfect from the beginning. It's a journey. So allow yourself to just show up, put your best foot forward, and show up consistently. And then you're going to grow. And you're going to take your audience along with you in the growth process. Be because something happens when you're growing along with your audience or your audience grows along with you they become it's like family yeah. you start rooting i start rooting for rich rebukes or i start rooting for gary v these people don't even know i exist <laughs> they don't even know i exist but i'm connected to them yeah they're, they're family to me especially they've been in my house for over a year oh yeah because they're always on the tv <laughs> yeah they've been in your house so it's important that we see it like that. You're trying to build a relationship with people. 
people out there. And what our job is to do is to, is to connect with them. Yeah, there's that too. I get that. I think connecting, you know, that like heart to heart connection, that's more like YouTube. A long form YouTube. Yeah. Or, and also social media, you know, reels and stuff. But providing people with just straight information, you know, that's very important. And that's a blogger thing. So, you know, all these things we're starting to learn along the way is because that we actually tried. I encourage people to try something new. Try that business that you've always thought about. You always wanted to start a microgreens business. Just try it. What will happen? What's the worst that'll happen if you fail at it? You learn, right? Mm. So I think the point. I want to summarize by saying: try, be willing to fail, and um, you grow as you and trust the process because that's where the growth happens. Uh, and then leave it up. Leave everything else to God. <laughs> Any closing thoughts, my dear? You know what? When we first sat down, we were going to talk about um, about these RV resorts and how you never found one that you that wowed you uh -huh. so far. <laughs> and then we turned it into, you know. Well, I hope it brought people value, but the, the, <laughs> I think that, um, yeah. Well, going back to the whole RV resort thing, they just a lot of these places. Well, actually, no, no, no. We were going to talk about the RV resorts, but we ended up talking about how some of these softwares have bugs that are annoying, and how they they don't improve, yes. and then. I was also willing to give them their flowers. These uh, entrepreneurs that venture out and and create these softwares that they try. we use, they, they try. do serve a purpose because without them, other people wouldn't go. I want to do that too and exactly. make it better. Exactly, make it better. So, so yeah. they had. We have to give them their flowers, even though they were the stepping stones for another company. Yeah. It's not their responsibility that you don't try out of. It's okay to try all the things, even though you found one. There's a better version out there, so don't stay static. I think that's the whole point of this message. When you stay static, you die. But the more emotion, the more things are going, the more you're doing different things and exposing yourself to different ideas and trying different things, you live. You are correct. All right. On that note, it's bye. I agree with that. Bye, y'all. Subscribe to the channel. We'll bring you more.